right. Good evening, everyone. Calling together the meeting for the planner board, February 1st, 2022. First, I have an opening statement I need to read. This meeting is being recorded in accordance with the government order suspending certain province provisions of the open reading law, general law chapter 38, section 20. Real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the planning board utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the question and answer function. Submitted text comments will be read into the record. For those of you joining by phone, press star nine. If you want to ask a question, please do raise your hand. A copy of this recording will be on the city's web pages. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure account accuracy. Um, so we have Larry Hassan. Here. Parita Das. Present. Samantha Broyce. Here. And James Sweeney. Here. And Tony Gonzalez present. We have um, Chief Williams with us. Rob May, director, and Pamela Gurry. Okay. Start with the review and acceptance of the minutes from the previous meeting. So we will need a motion from a board member oh. to approve the 1 4 and 1 5 meeting minutes. Motion to approve. Review and acceptance of the minutes of the meeting from January 4th, 22 and January 5th, 22. Second. Okay, roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. Farida Das? Yes. Samantha Broys? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. All right, uh, before we continue, just wanted to make note that there's a few continuances so we have 6870 Field Street continued to March 1st as we turn to ZBA. We have 15 Rutland Square. Site plan approval continued to March 1st. And 172 Route 558-18 Belgravia Ave. It's definitive subdivision request for continuance till April 5th. Is that all the continuance, Pam? It is. Okay. Yeah. And now the a and uh, There are two. The first one is a parcel off of Pleasant Street. It's a vacant parcel, so there's no address to it. And it's on the corner of, of Prospect Field and Pleasant and they're looking to divide off the property into two parcels, one which will face on Field Street and one that'll remain off of Pleasant Street. They are, it's commercially zoned, so they're allowed to divide it down however they see fit, but they will, if they wanna use it for anything but commercial, it'll require a zoning variance. Okay. Is there a motion? Motion to approve A&R plan map 43 plot 231 Pleasant Street lots A and B. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call Larry Hassan? Yes. Farida Das? Yes. Samantha Broyce? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Okay. Next. The second one is the property is in Abington, except for actually the two slivers of property that you see there in, that are in Brockton. And they are tiny little slivers. And what he's done is he's divided the sliver into two halves. One which will be on one property in Abington and one which will connect to the other property in Abington. There's nothing you can do with them in Brockton. But again, so we're charged with the sliver in Brockton. Correct. Don't worry about Abington. No, there'll be houses in Abington, <coughs> but that sliver in Brockton's going to be um, 
combined with Abington. Okay. Well, different one. Uh, is there a motion? Uh, motion to approve ANR application map 178, lot 381, North Quincy, lots B and C. Second. Okay. Larry Hassan? Yes. Farida Das? Yes. Samantha Broyce? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Thank you. Uh, there are no lot releases, no street acceptances. No, um, I will need you guys to come in and sign these. Okay. Sure, Pam. And when's a good time, Pam? Are they ready to be signed? Um, yes, they'd be ready to be signed tomorrow. Okay. I can, I can be needed tomorrow or Thursday at the latest. Okay, thank you. I'll swing in tomorrow. Thanks, Pam. Awesome, thank you. All right, thank you, everyone. So next, um, we need a vote on the adoption of Lovett Brook Master Plan. This is the presentation we heard, I think, oh, is it January 6th? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, is there a motion? Motion to approve Lovett Brook Plan. Second. Second. Larry Hassan? Yes. Parita Das? Yes. Samantha Broyce? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. Thank you. Thank you all board. Yeah, welcome, moving right along. The first um, applicant on the agenda is for a site plan approval, 1208 Montello Street, 24 unit residential building. Is that just Scott or who else is joining us? I believe our Matt, uh, the owner is here he is. He's here. I, I believe he's on the phone, I think. Could he raise no? Is he? I'm Hello, all set there. H. Oh, H. There he is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me promote you to panelist. And there you are in the group. Congratulations. <laughs> the floor is yours, Scott. Thank you, Mr. May. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, uh, members of the board, Scott Farrier from Holmgren Engineering, uh, representing Buildar Group, uh, who is proposing a three-story building, a three-story residential building at 1208 Montello Street, right at the corner of Montello and Riverside Ave. Uh, it's the site in previous years of a multifamily home uh, that was burned down. It's been vacant now for two or three years. Uh, the previous owner went through the Board of Appeals process uh, a few years back, uh, looking for 32 residential units. That was denied by the Board of Appeals. We then switched uh, the plan, basically the same footprint, but down to 24 residential units with 24 parking spaces. We came to the planning board back uh, about two years ago for permission to return to the ZBA. Uh, then it shortly thereafter, we received ZBA approval for the plan that's before you. So again, it's a, a three-story building, eight units per floor, parking uh, essentially underneath the building. So 24 spaces underneath in the garage and then eight units per floor. It's a, an even break in the building, 12 two-bedroom units and 12 one-bedroom units. Uh, so that's the, uh, the breakdown. The two-bedroom units are about 1,200 square feet apiece, uh, a little bit plus or minus on some of the units. And the one-bedroom units are about 750 square feet apiece. Uh, as you folks know, it's right down the street, a couple hundred feet for the Campello uh, T station. So that, that's obviously a... Uh, a good thing we, we feel like for the community and certainly for the developer at this point to, to have people that are that are close to the T and that'll be using the uh, public transportation in and out of Boston. Uh, as you can see on the plan, it's a, about a 15,000 square foot lot uh, with our design. It, it's uh, just about all taken up by the, uh, by the proposed building, a little bit of green space uh, to the side of the building uh, closest to the, our Montello Street property, uh, our Montello Street abutter. There is a separate 
uh, parking space for delivery vehicles off of Montello, as uh, the planning board and the ZBA have both been looking for on these type of uh, projects. So we do have that separate delivery space. Uh, we have a, an on-site drainage system that'll handle any increased runoff from the roof. Uh, that'll be basically under the garage. Uh, a leaching system that'll take care of all of the uh, the increased runoff from from our project. All other utilities uh, are available in Riverside Ave, Madam Chair. Uh, as part of the construction, we are rebuilding uh, the sidewalk uh, uh, in front of our building on Riverside Ave. Uh, the handicap ramp at the corner of Montello and Riverside, I believe, is fairly new. Uh, so we're basically picking up from the handicap ramp going down Riverside. Uh, to our frontage. Uh, so that'll be an entirely new sidewalk. Uh, I think that's really it, Madam Chair. That's a, a quick breakdown of what we're looking for. Um, what, I'm going to open it up with a question. You said the sidewalk on, down Riverside. But what, right. about, what about the sidewalk down in, on the other side of the street? That one's in really bad shape would that be Rob would that be part of this applicant's responsibility or the city's um, when you say on the other side of the street do you mean the other side of Riverside well no um on 28 on I'm Montello Montello right. yeah well I don't think you'd want to leave that looking that way Scott right this we do want to pull up your plan that'd be helpful it's always a loaded question, Madam Chair. <laughs> I'll try. If Rob gives me uh, permission, or he can just do it for me. You like he should usually have does. permission, but I will <laughs> do it. Give me of the embarrassment. Um, exactly. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Love an honest man. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I think sheet C4A probably shows it a little bit better, Rob, just to get rid of the plantings that so we we do have just that that small section madam chair right in front of our building uh that's existing yeah right there that existing yeah. bitcoin sidewalk uh that we're planning on keeping as i said the handicap ramp uh right around the corner that's uh fairly new and is concrete and is in uh in good shape the the bitcoin sidewalk right there that we're keeping it's in uh it's actually in pretty good shape as well. That's why we were keeping it. The one on Riverside is a little bit broken up. That's why we were uh, hoping to replace that. But that's certainly uh, we'll take any input that you folks have on that issue, Madam Chair. So what I'm looking at, it's 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 in bad bad shape. Um, the one along Montello on that side. Yeah, and I don't see the. Okay. You know, Madam Chair, it would make sense to just completely wrap the corner. Okay. Thank yeah, you. It's only any it, other it, it's probably 75 feet or so, Madam Chair. So uh, you know, once we put our driveway into that uh for that loading space, yeah, it's it's 70 or 75 feet. So you're you're probably right. It's uh probably worth just redoing it at this point. All right, thank you. Questions from the planning board members? Madam Chair, <clears throat> if if I may, um, we have been working very closely with Scott and the design team and the ownership of this new project. Uh, this is exactly the kind of thing that we would like to see happen in the Campello um, neighborhood and um, especially within walking distance of the Campello train station. It, it kind of um, is the first, maybe the first project out of the ground um, on our uh, Campello vision, you know, across the street, across Riverside, uh, we're working with uh, NeighborWorks on a 90 unit residential development. Um, this is really going to connect the community with the train station and knit that back into the neighborhood. So I'm, I'm hoping you'll adopt this. Very good. Thank you for that. Oh, there's no uh, Madam Chair, if I may. Sure. Uh, is there any way, in addition to the plan, we could see the rendering to this? 
if there is one, Scott? Don't get seasick. There is, Mr. Sweeney. I've got it behind me. You probably can't see it, but uh, there we go. I think it was uh, the renderings are, yeah, sheet six and seven, I believe, Rob, of that set. Yeah. Those are the floor plans. There we go. Okay. I didn't want to move too fast. Well, that, uh, yeah, if you can just scroll up a little bit from there, Rob, that's uh, that's looking at it from Riverside. The little blocked out section way over to the left would be the entrance uh, to the garage. So as you can see, there's a little bit of a, a slope change from Montello heading down Riverside to the train station, which actually works in our favor. So we have a, an at-grade entrance right at the corner of Montello and Riverside uh, for pedestrians to enter the building in the lobby. And then as it slopes down, it, it works perfectly for our, uh, essentially a garage under if it was a, a raised ranch type of a house. So it, it works per perfectly for that. And then the, the three stories of residential up above it. Scott, is that, is that considered the podium parking there? Um, it, it's a partial podium. Yeah. It's, simply because it's, it, it's, and it's partial underground. Right. So it, it, it would be considered a podium if it was all above ground. Okay. So it, it's like just a 75, it's 75% above ground. So it, it I'm yep. called partial. Thank you. Other Thank questions you. from the planning board? Uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair. Actually, I actually have a question. Um, hi, Scott. Really quickly, uh, I know that you were working with the city engineer on this. I know that um, the city engineer had some recommendations. Can you sort of talk a little bit about those recommendations and what you did to sort of fulfill those recommendations? Sure. Uh, you know, most of the changes, uh, you know, that we come up with with the city engineer through the, this process are a kind of technical in nature and really, you know, don't show up all that well on the plans. Uh, but if we actually, if we flip back to sheet number C4, uh, one of the, one of the questions that the city engineer had and one of the suggestions he had, uh, we have sewer lines and drain lines that cross over each other. Uh, so the city engineer wanted us to propose where the pipes cross each other to be duct aligned as opposed to a, a PVC pipe that we would typically have. Uh, so we made that, yeah, that's perfect right there, Rob. Uh, so right inside the building where we have our underground infiltration system, uh, you can see the, the drainage in the sewer uh, cross each other as you continue down towards the, uh, towards the exit of the garage, Rob. Yep, right there. You can see the, the sewer and the drain uh, uh, kind of right on top of each other. So in that location there, they're crossing each other. The city engineer wanted us to, to go with duck line, which is labeled six inch DI for the pipe. Uh, so we made that change. Uh, a couple of other items uh, that the city engineer had were just some clarifications on the grading for the sidewalk at the, at the rear of the building, uh, just to make sure that the cross slopes and the, uh, the down slopes on the, on the ramps were within ADA requirement, which is a 2% cross slope in a 5% down slope. So he just wanted to make sure that we had enough spot grades on the plan so the contractor would uh, be able to handle that. Uh, the other thing that we've been working a lot with the city engineer on are the, uh, the driveways into these properties uh, where before uh, a lot of places in the city, you would see a, a sidewalk that went down, uh, a handicap would go down from the sidewalk. You would cross the driveway, then go back up a ramp to get back to the sidewalk. Uh, now, as you drive around, not only Brockton, but uh, a lot of the biggest cities around uh, around the area, the sidewalk itself goes straight across the driveway level. There is no ramp down or ramp up. And it's the actual driveway itself that ramps up uh, off of the edge of pavement. So that area that Rob is highlighting right there where the sidewalk is will be level straight across. There is no ramp uh, for, the, uh, for the wheelchairs they have to navigate. So it's it's a little bit more of a, uh, I think, a modern design and what most of the, the planners are, are going with in, uh, in urban areas. So we've, we've made that change on this plan and, and we're trying to incorporate it into all of our plans as he suggested. So those, those are really the, uh, the two major items that were, uh, that were requested that we've been working with the engineering department to rectify. Thank you, Scott. And is there Thank anything you. that's outstanding that we should know about? Um, 
No, we're just waiting for his uh, for his final blessing. I, I met with him last week. We went over those couple of items that again those sloping issues on the uh, on the sidewalk. Uh, really, that that was uh, that was it. Just that that piping issue and in, in the the sloping situation. So I, I think that's it. Thank you, Madam Chair. If I could, sure. Um, one of my favorite questions: um, exterior lighting. I just if you if you is that building going to have any on that at night? Yeah, we do have. Uh, I believe the architectural plans uh, call for downward lighting. You can see them on the plans. And uh, in addition to that, we've proposed. Uh, There's up lighting here. Yep, up lighting there for the sign. One of the plans that you had up. Rob, I think the other one we were looking at with the garage showed the lights. Uh, yeah, right there on the it's side right of the garage there. entrance. Uh, in right addition there. to that, we're proposing uh, two of the city of Brockton lands that you've been putting around the downtown area. Uh, one of them on Riverside, one at the intersection of Riverside and Montello, and then further down our frontage on Montello Street as, uh, as pedestrian lighting and, and a little bit of lighting for the building, it's right on top of the sidewalk. So we've added those uh, that you folks have been seeing pop up all over the city. S Scott, so what you're saying is it's gonna continue with the uh, the downtown themed lighting, uh, city exactly. lighting for that area? Okay. Yes. Okay, other questions before we open it up for public comment? So I, I have a question. So on the Riverside Road, you have a CME wall, you know, and I don't see any light there. Um, I don't know, is that enough, what you described right now or well, not? I, like, I just, the, yeah, we've, we've got those two lanterns right there that Rob is pointing to, the downward facing light. So that'll give you light as you enter yeah. into the garage. Uh, yeah, from that car, from the garage entrance to the main entrance, I don't see any light there in that whole wall. Yeah. The entire, so, you mean the entire, yeah. sorry, you mean the entire yeah. building, right? Really? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Uh, you know, we, we felt like it, it, there is going to be some lighting at the corner of the building there, that, that upward uh, lighting that Rob spoke about originally. But in addition to that, we've got those two lamp posts that we have right on the sidewalk. Uh, so the feeling was that, especially the one right in front of the door, that would give uh, plenty of light into that entrance. And I believe, Scott, there's a street light here. Right. And here. Right, exactly. Okay. Seems like it's such a beautiful building, you'd want to see it at night. Mm -hmm. It's in how many stories are we? Four or five? Three stories plus the garage. Okay. So, um, so I, I agree with James. Uh, additional lighting, as long as we don't make it look like Las Vegas. You could certainly <laughs> just, I, just sort of, I guess that comes into the wattage. Uh, yep. Um, so just you know, we, it's beautiful. We want to see it. I think it would attract other investment to do the same when you see when you drive by in Brockton downtown at night. Okay. We'll we'll make sure the architect adds those for the uh, on the final set. Thank you. So would we and, want to specify downward lighting from either the middle of the building or the top of top of the building corners? I, I would think in the center. Yep. In the center. These up, up and down from the center? Yeah. Right on the second floor, basically. Yeah, up and down. Yep. I, I do want to um, remind, this section is open. And right. so the light from the garage will also shine through this uh, opening and onto point. the sidewalk. Yep. I, I do agree the middle of the building would be, be good. Do you have a question, Parita? Yeah, I have one more question about the main entrance. I see that it's kind of in the corner. So, um, so uh, I was wondering, do you have any kind of signage for the wayfinding, uh, whoever is coming from Montello side? Because it's kind of hidden, right? So. There will, there will be a building sign typically, uh, and I don't know if they show up on these plans, uh, but typically that, uh, 
the yellow architectural feature on the on the building going all the way up that kind of looks like an elevator shaft right there in the front typically that's where they would uh, we would have a, a building sign so i'm sure there will be one there just to you just might to set want the building. A, a smaller sign here right mm -hmm. because the building name will sit on this panel yep as a larger oh, larger okay. feature this this oh. may as I did not see that in the elevation. Yep. Got it. And where is the transformer? I did not see the transformer. In the back of the building towards uh, sheet four or five would show that, Rob. There we go. Yep. Yep. Either one of those. Yeah. So right there, the back of the building. Uh, closest to our neighbor. Yep, exactly right there. The the square area with the we've got Abavite in front of it, but that's uh, that would be the transformer right in that green area. Okay. And the electrical room back here. Right. We don't have obviously a lot of room for a transformer, so that's the best place we could put it. Okay, other uh, questions? I've got one last one. What's on the, from the street, what's on the right side there? In that, uh, I mean, it almost, the, the footprint looks like, a, almost like a handgun. <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, it's a sidewalk around the bill. Oh, you mean right there? Yeah, that's an existing house. Okay, all right. Yes. Thank yep. you. Yep. All right, if there are no other questions, uh, Rob, you want to open it up to the public? Um, yes, I need to stop sharing to do that. So uh, if there's anybody from the public who would like to comment on this plan, uh, please use the raise your button icon at the, or raise your hand icon at the bottom of your screen. If you hover over the bottom of your screen, you should have a, uh, a menu bar that opens up. You just simply click on that um, raised hand and we'll allow you to speak. And I do not see anyone with their hand raised at the moment. Um, okay. And so we shall continue. All right, just to recap a few things, if this was to be a, a motion, repair the sidewalks on the Montella Street side, additional lighting downward, the middle of the building. And um, we'd also need to make sure that the city engineer signs off on, on all that he needs to. Did I miss anything, Pam? The, exter the exterior lighting. Yeah, the downward lighting in the middle of the building. It was more of like a sconce lighting, but however you want up, to phrase Up and down. So. Okay, up and down. All right. Nothing else, Pam, from the engineer we have to clear for conditions? Um. Like I said, the plan was um, dropped off yesterday. So I'm sure he hasn't had a chance to review it. So um, as long as you include that condition in there. that Okay. Nothing gets signed and no building permit issues. All right, is there a motion? Motion to approve with uh, the said conditions. Second. Second. All right. Roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. Samantha Royce? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Rob, for the help. Have You're a good welcome. evening, guys. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. All right, next up is 432 Crescent Street. It's a preliminary subdivision. Representative <laughs> J.K. Holmgren. Did he? Scott again? Yeah, but I think he signed off. Oh. Uh, he did. Well, then, well, well, someone want to message him while we move on to preliminary subdivision, Amelia Estates, <laughs> W Engineering.
Are they here? Hang on, did Scott just come back in? No, it's um, Charlie and Evan. It's Okay, move no. them over. And um, well, I'm trying to email Scott. I'll move them over then. And they have moved in. Yeah, can you just? Oh, you know, Hello. hang on just one second. Evan's got a fancy microphone. Like a podcast. I'm trying to look professional here, you know. Dang. I'm going to have to get the uh, gas fireplace behind me, though. That's I like that. It's electric. <laughs> it's cool. Okay. Let's... Are you ready? Um, I am. Yep. All right. Is Jim um, on? Evan? Oh, you want Jim? Promoting yes, the panelist also. And who is presenting? I think Jim was going to start off just to introduce what we're doing. Yeah, uh, Madam Chairman, Chairwoman, uh, and members of the Planning Board, thank you very much, Attorney Jim Burke. I represent, and please to represent Charlie Macy. And he is the developer of Amelia Estates, a project that you are extremely familiar with. Uh, Charlie has met uh, a number of times with the members of the planning department, uh, and uh, he has modified his plan based on suggestions uh, that were mutually reached. And he thinks he's got a, uh, uh, a more beneficial plan for development of Amelia Estates. And I'd like Evan to please identify the changes for you. Uh, in this request to uh, be allowed to return to the zoning board. Very good. I'm going to share my screen. Um, again, Evan Watson here with W Engineering, also representing uh, the applicant. Is my screen being shared just to check that? We have the, the plan? Yes, yes, it is. Okay. Okay. So um, here we have Amelia States, uh, this time shown with 18 lots with uh, the reduced frontage. Um, it should be noted that we do have uh, quite a few lots here that actually do comply uh, with the 175 feet of frontage. We have one, two, three, four, I believe there's five in here, five. Um, and so what we've also done is um, we have a couple things to, to address the design of the road. We don't need to change at all. None of the drainage, none of the grading, none of the profiles, everything stays the same. Uh, the access road here uh, and the cross project water easement, that stays in exactly the same spot. Uh, the only difference we would have to do is change this drainage pipe. Um, you can see here, we had it over, whoops, excuse me. We had it over to the right a little bit along this property line. And now when the property line comes in, we can just move the pipe. Um, and that's it. Um, the great thing about this new alignment here, as uh, Attorney Burke was saying, is some of these lots, they actually get a little bit better. Um, you can see in the original plan, we have some lots that tail off behind one another. Um, and the geometry of, of the lots, especially in, in this zone, aren't that great uh, because we're, we're chasing some of that area. So when we look at the new revised plan, the, the lots are much more uniform. The sure. lines essentially come straight back. Um, so this plan fits, um, you know, we had the same style house that we were showing before. Um, it fits with the other uh, projects in the area. And we think this is a, a good project and be happy to take any questions. Okay. 
open it up to the planning board. Madam Chair, if I could. Um, so this, by downgrading the number of lots, are we providing better alleviation for the drainage? So yeah, the, the drainage system was uh, designed with this number of lots uh, in mind. Actually, I had 20 lots in mind. So um, having the 18, the drainage that's provided will be able to handle that, no problem. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Madam Chair, if I may give some history on this um, site. Of course um, you may. That we are seeing again. Um, the property owner uh, and the development team came to the city with a proposal to build 18 lots. Um, and it's pretty much the plan that you're looking at now. Uh, we had been uh, told by our uh, city solicitor that interpreting subdivision law, that if we were to, we, the board, were to waive the lot frontage requirement, uh, that would be the same as, you know, granting it a, a variance. And so they didn't need to go to the zoning board if they wanted a smaller lot that was not 175 feet in, in width. Um, there was some uh, discussion with a neighbor and the neighbor's attorney with our law department and um, the information or the uh, a, a approval to do that that we thought we had was um, reversed. And we, quite frankly, we still don't know what the right answer is but the applicant chose to drop the number of uh, lots from 18 to 15. Um, and they were all conforming lots. Um, you may remember that after you know, a couple of weeks, the planning board eventually approved these, um, including a waiver on the length of the road, which um, our subdivision Regulations say that the road can't be more than uh, 600 feet. Uh, dead end can't be more than 600 feet. This is now 2,200 feet. Um, but um, in in the rigmarole of going back and forth between um, the 18 uh, and 15, the developer obviously has lost some ability uh, to recoup their expenses in putting in the road the um, gravity, or not gravity, but the uh, uh, ejector pumps for the uh, sanitary sewer, all of that has to be pumped uphill to connect with the gravity sewer system. So um, obviously the planning board did not think that 20 units was appropriate, but the owner is back um, with his original plan and hopes that uh, you will consider an 18 unit uh, subdivision. And I'll end there. So we're still faced with the same um, issue. Not enough frontage. No hardship. We approved 15 and now we're back for 18 and we, we, there's not enough change. If I may, uh, uh, Madam Chairwoman, the standard here is not uh, to be allowed to return to the zoning board uh, with a substantial change, uh, but rather a preliminary subdivision before you with the request that you render an opinion uh, to uh, uh, allow us to proceed to the uh, zoning board of appeals. So there is no need to discuss, and I think Mr. May can agree with this, a hardship uh, at this stage of the proceeding. That, that solely falls under Chapter 40A, the Zoning Enforcement uh, Act. So uh, I, I think the standard is, if you think it's a good plan, uh, then you allow the zoning board to make its decision. And, right. and I think that's just as simple. 
And that's why I brought up there's we're space with the same issue with not enough frontage. So the issue is still before us. Um, other planning board members? Yeah, Ma Madam Chair, if I could. Um, so from the 20 to the 18, um, just so I can get this clear, there was, there's no change in the frontage of the lots. It's kind of the configuration of the the body of the lots. Is that is that what, what I'm hearing or what, I'm, what we're seeing here? Uh, 20 to the 18, uh, we have more lots that actually conform. So okay. Uh, okay. the difference before is that we were, uh, the 20 lot plan showed three lots on this cul-de-sac and divided uh, these lots also. And then it also had the, in order to accomplish that, we had the misshapen lots that had the skinny uh, rat tails, the, if you will, the, the long geometry. So it was essentially this same plan um, in, in this zone, and we were able to push everything around to get the 20. Uh, so this plan from the 20 is we have less lots around the cul-de-sac, and then we don't have to chase that extra area. So we're able to, to shape out the lots uh, nice and uniform. Okay. <clears throat> And the, ben and the benefit of the, the drainage here is that, in addition to that, how you reconfigure it, so it, it also benefits the drainage? Yeah, so that we just have to realign this one drainage pipe so that it goes on uh, this property line. And the general benefit of doing this is, you know, if you look at the geometry of these lots, you have a 30,000 square foot requirement with 175 foot of frontage. So, when you take 175 foot of frontage, these all these lots end up being oversized and underutilized. So it's not uncommon in the city of Brockton to have a frontage that's commensurate with the width requirement, which is 125. So all along, this was our ultimate goal. Um, but as Rob said earlier, we we kind of ended up on a circuitous path to get here. So mm -hmm. um, this me matches what's typically done in the city where we have a width requirement of 125 feet and a 30,000 square foot lot requirement. Mm -hmm. So when you come in and zoom in here um, for 125 feet of frontage, this depth gets us right around 30,000 square feet right mm -hmm. where we want to be. Um, so it utilizes the land better and it makes sense having the 30,000 square feet and 125 foot width that the frontage should be 125. When we stretch out to 175, that's where you start seeing, um, you know, the oversized lots that were 40,000 square feet, et cetera. So th this and utilizes the land better and is, it matches the width. Okay. And what would you say would be the average uh, square footage of the, the homes being uh, produced there? Just uh, these the I show, I show a width here of 75, I think by 28. Um, and Charlie could speak up to this actual size, but I expect these to be a four bedroom home. Mm -hmm. Um, these are shown as generic, um, and they're either a little bit, they're a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller than what's already built here on Kelly. Mm -hmm. About the same size. <clears throat> oh, okay. So give or take, uh, I would assume when you, towards the end of the cul-de-sac, you might build them a little bigger, but. I mean, what's, I mean, are we over 2,000 square foot, four bedroom? Uh, I'm thinking over maybe 2,500 square feet at least. Charlie, yeah, it's we've maybe about 25 to 2,800. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, it should be pretty much uniform uh, with the existing neighborhoods. If you're trying to build a nice upscale four bedroom home, two and a half bath, um, anywhere from 22 to 2,600 square foot. Um, I also wanted to elaborate on a couple of different things. There's actually six lots out of the 18 proposed here, uh, which is a third that actually do have the 175 feet um, frontage. And again, I, I know that uh, Mr. May and everyone has elaborated of this plan from day one, which we, we thought this plan was what we were going to pro propose at 125 feet from day one that we thought that was uh, within the rules and regulations of the planning board to actually endorse. So uh, obviously somehow that was a misconnect and, uh, and I've diligently worked with the input with the planning board and the planners to try to make the best thing we can to conform with uh, all abutting properties that have been approved 
uh, keep everything in the neighborhood and and give the lots the most usable area and still a third of them have the 175 foot. So this plan is significantly different than the last plan that you've seen in 20, all with a uh, better area, better usage and, and more conforming. So I hope um, I hope that's all considerable to the board. Madam Chair. Yes. If I could, I have, I have been on record and still am on record as saying that the 30,000 square foot, 175 foot, with um, is is a bit ridiculous for Brockton. It's more of an Eastern um, zoning standard, and and it was changed for a variety of reasons. But it it really is um, um, not a, a a good fit for Brockton. There's very few homes that are built on that standard. Yet that is what the law is. Um, so. Um, until we change it, um, developers like Mr. Macy are going to have to go into the Zoning Board of Appeals and see if they can find a, a hardship uh, for making a, um, uh, an appeal for uh, a, a smaller lot or a smaller lot frontage. And as we had been saying earlier in the 15 lot subdivision, we had 15 lots and 15 of those lots were conforming. In this 18 lot subdivision, um, we have six that are fully conforming and all of them conform to the 30,000 square foot requirement. In the eight, in the 20 lot subdivision, I don't remember how many were conforming, but none of them were conforming for a lot frontage. I think a few of them were conforming for lot area. So it it's really gets down to is the board comfortable with 125 feet of frontage versus the required 175 feet. Madam Chair, if I could. Um, just seeing the size of the structures, I don't think they'd, you know, I'm, I'm not foreseeing an issue, but uh, Chief Williams is on with us. Does he foresee any public safety issues with this? as far as frontage and how close the structures will be? No, I don't see any problem with the, are you hearing me? Yep, yeah. I got you. Okay. Um, I don't see any problem with the frontage sizes. Uh, the one thing I'd like to see on the drawing is the a representation that all these buildings will be sprinkled as we agreed in the past. Um, but the frontages, I don't think um, are, are, are a problem in my personal opinion, 125 feet is, is big enough for these luxury houses up there. So that, that's right. They're all going to be sprinkled too. <clears throat> that's right. Okay. Thank you for that. Other questions? So for the lot 12 and lot 11, some half of the lot is uh, half of the lot will be used for the retention bond, right? That's right. So it's right now you're showing it's 1.1 acre, but it's uh, there's an easement, right? And you have a fence right there, right? So yes, so we have a detention pond um, with a fence to indicate where the easement is. That's right. Um, and if you look at some of the complying lots, the backyard um, is is about the same. It's maybe a little bit shorter. Uh, lot 11 definitely has um, area that's similar to some of these other lots. Lot 12 is probably the smallest, um, but it's it's not too far off from 13 and 14, which are you know have no easement on them either. Mm -hmm. And, is there and this a is a little. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, uh, so I was wondering, is there a gate to enter that? Uh, area yeah so this plan keep in mind is not a, a design plan it's a preliminary plan so once if uh, we go over to zba and we are granted a, a waiver of frontage we would update the full plan set um, that you're familiar looking at which would indicate the gates and and all the the widths of the access road etc to modify the subdivision so um there but to simply answer your question yes there will be a gate <clears throat> uh, 
Other questions? Madam Chair, it's Larry. Go ahead, Larry. Um, so could uh, maybe Rob could help me on this or Pam, do, there's, there must be other newer subdivisions that have some of these frontage matters that have been waived by the zoning board for, do we have any examples that could bring to mind, not only for well, the members and- Directly to the South. Okay. Um, and the extension of Cyprus. Right. Um, and you can see him moving his um, cursor. Um, right. Those were all addressed by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Right. Um, and that site is under construction right now. Okay. Yeah, so it, it, ha it has been done. Uh, I was joking on the last meeting where, you know, the attorney said it was the gold standard. 20, in my opinion, is too much. This is a more suiting plan, in my opinion, to come uh, before us and back in the ZBA. Thank you. Right, other, other questions before we open it up to the public? Okay, Rob. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to um, address uh, the board, if you could use the raise your hand function um, at the bottom of your screen, if you hover over it, uh, a little menu will pop up and you'll see a raise your hand um, icon and you just press that and you're ready to go. And I do not see anyone um, raising their hand at this point in time. Uh, I do want to remind the board that this is a preliminary plan. Uh, it's not final. If they are granted zoning relief, they will come back to us uh, with a full set of plans. Um, and as far as they do not make any major modifications and you know come back with something uh, with a whole bunch of tadpole tails, um, we should be able to uh, accept it without uh, too much issue. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, may I ask a question? Sure. Um, there are three hydrants I can see on the plan, or is there more? Um, I don't think I labeled them on the plan, but I have at least one at the end of each cul-de-sac and one um, at the access road to the drainage uh, basin. And then there is one at the end of Westbury Road. Okay, I missed the one at the uh, road to the drainage basement, uh, drainage easement then. Um, my, my thought process is um, from the road that comes in from Chilton, uh, where you go out towards Rockland Circle, that's what, about 900 feet? I'm sorry, so I, I'm sharing the screen again. So you're saying Westbury sure. Road here? Yes, from, from Westbury to the end of the cul-de-sac, uh, up towards Rockland, to the west. What's that distance? Um, I don't have it on the plan, but it's probably about 900 feet, sure. We got yeah, a hydrant so, here at the end, one here, and then I think I was playing one here. Right. So we carry 800 feet of hose. It, it, we might just want to put one in the middle of that stretch of roadway there. Okay. And then the, other, the only other comment is the hydrant that's in the cul-de-sac at the top. If we could just put that off to a 45-degree angle because the plows tend to just push all the snow straight forward. Um, when plowing the streets at first, and then we uh, bury our hydrants and we never see them again till spring. <laughs> sure, we can put it off to the side. I, I like to keep them somewhere near a property line, so we'll either put it you know, on, on one of the sides over here. I think this one might be okay, but we can work with you on the, the locations when we finalize the design plans, without a doubt. Okay, very good. Thank you. Can I just so add a question uh, really quickly? I'm so sorry. Uh, okay, so there were 15 fully conforming lots before. Is that right? Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, and now there are uh, 18 lots that you're proposing, but six of them um, conform in terms of frontage in size. Is that right? That's right. Okay, all right. Um, and the reason for that is, um, uh, did you say that it wasn't a good use of the lots? 
So I can share the screen here. So, yeah, you know, when you when you come around the corners here, there's the geometry and the nature of this gives us enough frontage for these lots here. The geometry of the the width of this road, uh, this lot, the existing lot, doesn't give us enough depth to give 125 foot width. So the lot ends up being a little bit wider. So we have adequate area and adequate frontage. And then up here in the at the cul-de-sac, um, again, instead of pushing the road out further, we're trying to keep the road a little shorter. And so that gives some extra area for this lot. Um, so we ended up with 175 feet of frontage at the setback. And again, these two lots ended up being a little bit oversized. Um, these other lots are almost perfectly, this width of this area here, almost perfectly fits for a 30,000 square foot lot at 125 foot width. So that's why you see these, um, the majority of these are where we're looking for the, the frontage waiver and at this cul-de-sac here. Thank you. So Chief Williams, you might be able to answer this or Rob, but this is the previous um, plan is where we had the letters on file for from the police department and the fire department with no concerns for public safety. That is correct, ma'am. And would those be voided since there'll be additional lives on this road or does that not matter? I don't think it matters from uh, my end and I don't think it'll matter from the police department end. Uh, that was more concerning the length of the road, not the number of people on the houses that were there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Rob, you can open up to the public. Um, oh, we had already. Um, no one there. And I had nobody raising their hand. Okay. So um, you can proceed with your. I would. Someone like to make a motion. Motion to grant the ZBA. Second. Okay. Roll call. Larry Hassan. Yes. Samantha Broyce. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Rita Das. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, board, for its consideration. Have Thank a good you. Have a good evening. All right, so we're back to Scott is back. 432 Crescent Street. Scott, you ran away from us. Darn. Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the coach is waiting for me at Giorgio's. They're getting cold now. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, there's more. I'm fast. All right, is there a plan for 432 Crescent Street? Yeah, sorry about that, Madam Chair. Thank you for, uh, for not kicking me out entirely. So what we have is a, a preliminary subdivision, a piece of property uh, on the corner of Crescent and Henry Street, uh, kind of a, a oddly shaped parcel of land. Uh, it's on Crescent Street, uh, a little bit of a mixed zone, mostly multifamily homes across the street on Crescent Street. There's uh, a couple of, uh, of commercial units, but it, it's essentially a, a multifamily neighborhood. Uh, so what we're hoping to do is to get preliminary approval tonight so we can go to the ZBA uh, and then come back uh, to you folks for a definitive plan. But what we're looking to do is to divide the property into, uh, into three lots. Lot A uh, on Crescent Street would be a 7,200 square foot duplex home. Uh, the houses immediately around it are two family uh, units to the, to the left to the rear and also across the street. Those are two family homes. Uh, so we're hoping that the board and the ZBA would, uh, would find that that lot A uh, kind of is in, uh, is in fitting with the neighborhood. Uh, lot B has the existing home on it. It's a three bedroom, uh, excuse me, an existing three family dwelling. Uh, that'll have about 11,000 square feet on it. Uh, the access is currently and will remain off of Henry Street. Then the third lot would be lot C, about an 8,700 square foot lot uh, that has frontage on Henry and Moulton Street. Uh, that one is kind of tucked in that corner where they're on Henry Street and Moulton Street. There are mostly one family homes. So we uh, proposed a one family home on that one. Uh, it would most likely be a four bedroom home, uh, you know, a, a enough of a driveway for two cars on it. 
and we felt like also lot C would uh, would fit in with the neighborhood. So so that's our plan. So we're just looking for preliminary approval for you folks uh, that would allow us to get to the ZBA and uh, and see if they agree with us on this lot division plan. All right, so I'll open it up to um, question, Scott. Talk to us about parking, starting with lot B. How many do you yeah, have? Yeah, so lot B, as I said, it's, a, it's an existing three family. Uh, it's got an existing driveway uh, that'll remain. It's uh, enough for four cars. There's a little short driveway just off of that uh, that used to be used uh, to get into that existing garage, but right now we're going to be tearing that garage down. So we would have about uh, about five uh, parking spaces for that existing three-family home, Madam Chair. And you need how many? Zoning, we need two per uh, two per unit. So you'll have five, but you need six. Exactly. Madam Chair, it's Larry. Question, Scott. So sure. you're going to remove that garage because I was looking at that. It's so close to the lot line on C. Exactly. Is there not enough room to get another parking spot in there? You know, looking at it now, uh, we should probably put two parking spaces right there where that garage is. Yeah. So we'd have four in the, the big driveway. We could eliminate that little stub and uh, and put two spaces right there where the current garage is. That would I mean, it looks like these rooms, it's, it's kind of on an elevated area back there yep. um, where it's located, but it looks like to me you could get six spots out of that if you if you're going to remove that garage. But yeah. the other concern is on lot A um, being so close to Crescent Street. Um, yeah, and I can explain that one, Mr. Hassan. The, the there's a section in the zoning bylaw uh, 2713, but I'm sure that's not the the right section. But there's a section in the bylaw that allows you to instead of holding the 30 foot front yard setback, it allows you to hold the average of your two abutting houses, your house to the left and your house to the right. Uh, and the main reason for that is in a situation like this, you don't wanna have a brand new house sitting back 35 feet from the street. If your neighbors are 10 feet from the street, it'll look like the, it'll look like the house was just dropped uh, in place there and doesn't really fit in. So in this case, our, uh, our, the house on lot B is eight and a half feet. The house on our budding property is eight feet on uh, number 412 Crescent Street. So uh, we chose to hold a, a 10 foot setback on that one. Uh, again, where we're going for variance, whether or not that section of zoning, whether the building inspector would agree that that section of zoning still, uh, still works for us where we're dividing the property. But either way, we would be looking for, uh, for relief from the ZBA just to cover ourselves on that end. But that's the uh, that was the thinking behind it. And to be honest with you, that that section of the lot is only it's less than seventy feet wide, so uh, we wouldn't be able to hold the thirty foot front and a thirty foot rear uh, and be able to fit a house. So that's uh, that was the main reason for putting it at, at that location, sir. Okay, I was just wondering if I mean even to move it back ten feet, it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense, or is that is that because so, zoning is probably going to ask about that. It's, uh, yeah, you know, I, I guess it comes up to a preference. We could certainly, if we moved it to 20, then we would have 20, 20 in the front and 20 in the rear. Uh, it's one way to look at it. If you're going to allow this plan as it is, what's one more variance to the rear yard of, uh, of lot A, to be honest with you. So we could certainly look at uh, doing that, make that adjustment uh, to the ZBA plan. Uh, as you suggest, and have the 20 foot front and the 20 foot rear, and we can just add that uh, variance request to our uh, to our petition. I mean, it's just just a thought, just something. The way I'm looking at it, there, just so close to Crescent Street. Um, I mean, lot C, even I mean, it's a single family home, so I'm just looking at. Well, I can see that. Okay, I don't really have any other particular questions. I just think that, again, if you're removing that garage. I think you should be able to get two more spots in there. And if you Great. move in the duplex, the proposed duplex back, it might be easier, but that's just my thought, my opinion. I think they're good thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Madam Chair, if I could. Yeah, it, it does seem tight for parking, considering these are multifamilies, not single. Sure. 
Um, single family, not as much as a concern as opposed to lot A and lot B. Those suggestions are are good, but it's going to seem it's it's it's. I don't know. I guess my point here is it just seems tight. Right. Lot lot A is is what? It doesn't. I can't tell. What are you proposing for lot A, Scott? That would be a duplex. duplex. A, your typical oh, side okay. by side duplex with a you know a drive to the left for the left hand unit and a drive to the right for the right hand unit. Uh, I have how many bedroom? Question. How many bedrooms are proposed in each duplex in each side? It would be a typical three bedroom duplex. Three bedroom. Yeah. Okay. In the multi, uh, I'm sorry, in the three family. To be honest with you, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I could probably pull the field cat and get you an answer, but I, I, I don't know off the top of my head, Mrs. Wayne. No, that's all right. But typically, you know, uh, I, I, I guess this one comes down to parking where we like to consider maybe a spot and a half per bedroom. Uh, for Oops. Oh, Scott, you're muted. Yeah, I think he froze. Oh, he's back. Okay. Scott, are you with us? No, I thought Jim was speaking. Jim was speaking. Jim was gone. Oh. Not the only one with technology is Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. it's not <laughs> Madam Chair, it's Larry. He was saying, you know, 1.5 yeah. parking yeah. per bedroom, um, which I have to agree with him. It is. Uh, a lot to throw in these small this it's, small property it's always the uh it's always the problem we come up with the zba you, you know the zoning requires two for a unit obviously if you've got four bedrooms there's a likelihood that you're going to have more than two cars for that one unit so it's it's always a uh, a tricky situation and of course you know we don't want to necessarily have giant parking lots in residential areas so it's it's mm -hmm. uh it's tough to find the balance between what the zoning requires and what you really need uh, in the real world, I guess. Right, and I understand, but uh, this is does seem to be a, like we're trying to cram a lot into a small area, and then backing, you know, trying to pull out of these houses where the there's not much frontage onto a very busy Crescent Street. Exactly, I think the Henry Street and the Moulton Street are you know a typical residential streets, not as much of an issue, but. I understand backing onto Crescent Street isn't, uh, I'm sure, is a little bit of a scary situation most of the time. If, if you downsize this project, would it give more space and room to consider safety and parking and, and compliance? Well, we, you know, we, we did talk about that, Madam Chair. We said, you know, if if the ZBA denied it, how well, we, we really have no other way to divide the property just because of the location of the existing home. You know, so it, forgetting the size and all those issues, it makes sense that you would get one lot to the right of the building on, on Henry Street and one lot to the left of the house on Crescent Street. So, uh, you know, if you eliminated the house on lot A, I guess the only thing you could do, you could add another parking area for the existing three family home uh, off of Crescent Street just to give them more parking than they currently have. Uh, you know, that's one thing you could do and then still have lot C is a standalone single family home that, that kind of fits in with the neighborhood and you don't have as many issues coming in off of Moulton Street. Uh, or, you know, on the other hand, you could keep lot A and turn lot C into additional parking. So I, I guess there's, uh, there's two different ways to cut it, but we, we just felt like with the shape of the property and, and the size of the neighboring lots that it made sense, at least from a from a, a geometric point of view for the lots to divide it this way. I, I, I certainly understand uh, your concerns. And as I said, it, it comes up every month at the ZBA about packing on these, uh, these lots that we're trying to get multifamily homes into. It's, uh, it's definitely an issue. Um, Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, if I may, um, I think in, in um, our review internally, um, lot A is is a very difficult sell, um, uh, you know, given that it's a two family on the smallest lot um, with very tight parking and backing out onto Crescent Street. And I think it's a reach too far. Um, 
it, if lot A and lot B were combined, um, I could see a two lot subdivision with lot C being developed and lot A and B, you know, as one lot with, with the, the three family house um, uh, there with, you know, with, with parking improved. Yeah, we could, kind of if that I'm was a situation, with... you could come up with a parking lot where you could, uh, you know, in a small parking lot, but you could drive out of uh, the new parking lot you would put there as opposed to backing out. So we would at least resolve that Something issue. Of, that you'd come in and come exactly. out. Exactly. Yep. Back out in your parking lot and drive out onto Crescent Street. So you'd be driving in and driving out. And uh, that would, I yes. think, help the, the situation on lot B. And then, uh, you know, we don't have to build the, the parking lot as Mr. Hassan, the driveway that Mr. Hassan was speaking about uh, where the existing garage is. We could just tear it down, green that up and, uh, and, and put the additional this whole area could Crescent become Street. green. Yeah, yeah. Because I believe the house faces this way, does it not? It does it does? So you're so, really parking in their front yard. Exactly. So where does that leave us, if you were to consider that, um, Madam Chair? Yes. Your choice with this is you. Let it move on to the definitive the way it stands. You deny it or you recommend changes. So you can move it to the definitive stage with particular recommendations or, or particular conditions. Ask for a continuance. Yes, you may. It's out with my client as opposed to get, obviously we don't want to get a denial and I'd rather not go to the ZBA with all of these questions and you folks never seeing the plan that I'm going to bring to the ZBA. At least if I get a continuance, I can tune this plan up tomorrow, get it in time for your filing deadline of Monday to get on to the March meeting and we'll uh, take into account all the suggestions that have been made and, and have a a plan that everybody hopefully is happy or with in March, and then we can proceed to the ZBA after that. So I, continuing from the ZBA? I think we'll have to at this point, sure. I, I mean, there's no doubt we have to. We can't get to the ZBA without your approval. So that that will, uh, we'll have to I, definitely table that for this month. I think that's a good plan, Scott. Okay, thank you. Okay, so do we have to take a roll call vote on continuing this, Pam? Um, uh, yeah, continue to the yes. next meeting. So um, do we need a motion first or just a roll call? Please. A motion. motion. Motion to continue to the next meeting, 432 Crescent Street. Second. Okay, roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. Samantha Royce? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. Thank you, Scott. Right. Thanks Who's, for the input, folks. Who seconded that? I didn't. Me. Arita. Okay. Arita. All right. Any other business? If not, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? New adjourn. Second. Second. Oh, Larry Hassan? <laughs> yes. Samantha Boyce? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> no. All right. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night everyone. Have a good night.